We're coming up on Lunar New Year, and every year I do a feast right before to celebrate the new Lunar Year. This year, though, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to put a budget on how much I spend for that feast. I'm going to do a live seafood feast for under $50 because it's a COVID year. Everyone's struggling, so I'll show you guys how to eat well on a budget. All right, we are here in the live seafood section. As you can see, there's a ton of seafood available right now. They're all live, so it's gonna taste amazing. So this year, I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna pick some really random seafood and I'm gonna show you guys how to cook it. Just because the seafood is live and fresh doesn't necessarily mean it's more expensive than stuff you buy frozen from Costco or a chain grocery store. The secret to getting really cheap seafood is going to the Asian markets. I know, I know, a lot of you guys are saying, what about the quality? But think of it this way. If you're buying something that's already dead and pre-frozen for months or weeks, is it still as good quality as something that's still alive? Maybe, maybe not. But what I do know is that live seafood is almost always better than pre-frozen seafood. Sea urchin season has just started, so I'm gonna grab one. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be pretty good and it's on sale, so why not? It'll take a little work to process it, but it's totally worth it in the end. Apparently it's eel season also, but you know what? I think I'm gonna pass. To be honest, I'm not a snake person. They kind of freak me out, so I don't think I can process something like this, especially because it's alive too. I know it's not a snake, but it looks like one, so I'm gonna pass. So at the Asian market, once you've picked up the seafood that you wanted, you let them know, they grab it for you, and they price it up and bag it up, and then you're ready to go. Here's all my seafood. He's got it all bagged up. I know I said no basic seafood, but I can never say no to crab, so gotta get some. Let's go home. Alright, today we're gonna be working with some live seafood. You guys hear that? That's the sound from the rock crab. So I often see people just cook seafood straight from the ocean or the store. I don't like to do that. I like to clean my seafood up first before I put it in the pot. But first, I'm gonna trim my sea urchins just so I don't get poked and makes it a little bit easier to handle them. I'm using a brush that came from my Ninja Foodi grill, but you can use any brush as long as the bristles are a little bit tougher and harder. Honestly, a hard toothbrush is perfectly fine. Of course, I'm going to have to brush up all the rest of my other seafood and clean it up also. Before I boil my seafood, I'm going to go to my balcony and grab some lime leaves that I'm growing. I'm going to throw that in the stock when I boil it, just to give it more flavor and be less boring. I like to put some lemongrass in there. It helps with the fishiness smell of the seafood. Some lime leaves that I had just picked and washed. And I also put some chili in there. Um, you can omit the chili if you don't like to eat spicy, and then just add water. If you want an Asian twist to this, make sure to add a splash of fish sauce. Now we let that boil and move on to our Ninja Foodi grill and preheat it. Once the water is boiling, I put the crab in first because it takes longer to cook than the rest of the seafood. I wait till the end to put the rest of the seafood in and time it so it's perfect. Go ahead and put a lid on this so it cooks a little bit faster. So about six minutes before the crab's done, I put the rest of the seafood in because that's all it takes to finish it off. I don't know about you, but I don't like chewy shellfish. Now let's go back to the Ninja Foodi Grill because it's about warmed up. I'm going to add my shrimp in there and deep fry them. I've lightly brushed them with oil. This will help give your shrimp that crispy, crunchy feel that is just like deep fried shrimp in any other method. Once it's done, all you have to do is take it out and set it aside, and it's ready to eat. Since the oven's still hot, I want to take advantage and put my scallops in right away. They've been pre-blanched, so they're going to be quicker to cook in here and get the smoky flavor. Should now be time to take out your crab and the rest of your seafood that you've been boiling in the bigger pot. Make sure to have a bowl of ice ready to go because you don't want your seafood to overcook once you've taken it out. It's hot, so it's still gonna keep cooking. So the ice helps cool down the temperature so you get the just right texture of the meat. 
I like to do my sea urchin last just to keep it as fresh as possible. And the only way to do that is to do this at the end, right when you're about to eat it. All you have to do is take a pair of kitchen shears and cut around the perimeter of the sea urchin. They're very hard, but they're brittle and pretty thin, so you should be able to cut it very easily. Just be careful you don't cut too far up and cut into the meat. Now you lift off the cap and you'll see that there's meat on top and on bottom. Just be really careful with that. Before serving or eating, you're gonna wanna run it under water just to clean up all the muck and all the blood and all the unpleasant things to eat. There you go. It wasn't so hard now, was it? Generally, when I eat a ton of seafood like this, I like to put it on a big giant platter. It makes it a little bit easier and more fun to eat. You just have to dig in and grab whatever you want to eat and you see everything all laid out. So now that we're done cooking, it's time to taste the fruits of my labor. I have a dipping sauce here. It's a wasabi with lime and various other stuff. Um, I bought it pre-made, but I just added wasabi to it for that extra kick, which helps a lot with seafood. So what do we start with first? Hmm. Let's see, let's start with these clams. I've actually never had these clams before, so let's see how they taste. Mm. Mm. Super fresh, you guys. Tastes amazing. Mmm. Mmm. Let's have one of these now. So these are snails. Freshwater snails, I believe. Usually, you're supposed to use a toothpick or a pick or something, but I'm professional. I use my hands. Dip it in my sauce. Mmm, it's so flavorful. I have a spicy mint to it. Mm. What's next? So in Seattle, seafood is really easy to find. You can catch most of the stuff actually yourself too. And the license is really cheap. When you get lazy though, you can go to the grocery store and most of the time you'll be able to find some sort of seafood fresh, like crab year-round fresh. Sea urchin or uni, most of the year actually, it's available. I'm having, I'm having scallops. So when we think of scallops, you think of the little round little things you buy from the frozen, but it's really hard to find fresh scallops, like live scallops. These are kind of small, but I couldn't find big ones this trip. So I am gonna have to do with small, beggars can't be choosers. Mm. They're not as good as the big ones, but the flavor is exactly the same. I grilled them this time, so it has a little bit of that smoky flavor, which is amazing. Hmm, which we eat next. Oh, let's try some uni. Let me grab my handy dandy gold spoon. These were fresh, caught them, didn't catch them, bought them live. So let's have a bite. Usually with uni, it has to be fresh. Otherwise it tastes disgusting. And uni from different regions taste differently too. Did you guys know that? Some uni tastes really kind of like oceany. Some taste kind of buttery and creamy. 
I like the ones that taste more buttery and creamy. I hate the ones that taste super oceany and also the ones that are, you know, not fresh any longer can taste super oceany too. So it depends. Mmm. This one's definitely fresh. It's really sweet. It's refreshing. There's like that initial tinge of like ocean, but it's very, very minor. It's not overwhelming, so it's like fishy. And then there's like sweet, custardy, creamy, milky taste. And then the end of it, the ocean taste comes back a little bit, but it's still not overwhelming. Really fresh. Mmm. Mmm, got a piece. That definitely was a hit. Of course, shrimp. My grilled shrimp from my Ninja Foodi Grill. You guys gotta get a Ninja Foodi Grill. Those things are a lifesaver and they're amazing. Like, do you see this shrimp? Cooks it perfectly. And it has that smoky charbroil taste without all the burn. And it's really crispy. One of my favorite things to eat is shrimp head. Mm. Yum. You can hear that, right? Mm. Forgot to dip it in my sauce. Mmm. So good. Sorry guys, I'm eating with my mouth open, but you guys are gonna see that a lot because when it comes to food, I have no manners. Mm. I love eating like the little whiskers. That's what I call legs whiskers on the shrimp, especially when it's grilled or deep fried. By the way, this one tastes like it's deep fried, which is even better because sometimes grilled can be like tough and just hard. This one actually tastes like it's deep fried when it's crispy and crunchy. Mm. So I know some people like to peel the skin off the shrimp before they eat it, like this. But I actually like the shrimp skin when it's deep fried or grilled because it's so crispy. I eat it together. Plus I'm lazy and it's just way too much work and effort to peel the shrimp skin off. Mmm. It's heaven, you guys. Yum. Mmm. I take a sip of my boba tea, my milk tea. Mm. What can beat this? Nothing. Fresh seafood and fresh milk tea. This is the best. I know that most people, when you eat seafood, you don't eat it with um, herbs, but in Vietnamese culture, you eat everything with herbs, especially seafood. It enhances the flavor and it also hides the fishiness and makes the fishiness almost appealing rather than appalling. But this is a, this, I think, believe this is spearmint, this fresh spearmint, and it tastes amazing with seafood. And this other one is fresh coriander. Mm. I had a friend ask me before if you had to choose one type of meat, what would it be? And I was like, definitely seafood. I'll give up beef, I'll give up chicken, I'll give up pork, I'll give up everything. But I just need seafood. Mm. Wait, who eats the tail? Comment down below because some people think I'm disgusting for eating the tail and the head, but it's like the best part for me, especially when it's deep fried. Mm. So good, you guys. Mm. Okay, so this one, 
it's another form of, um, I don't know if it's a crustacean or if it's like a snail. Are they the same thing? But it's called a conch, so it comes from the ocean. So I'm assuming it's an ocean snail. It's really pretty. It's probably the same things that we pick up on the beach and listen for the ocean sound. But I'm gonna eat it. You see that? So I pull off this tail end. I know some people eat it, but not my thing. So I pull that thing off, kind of brush everything off best I can. Let's have a go at this escargot. My green sauce. It's definitely more oceany than the little escargot. The texture is very similar. It's more oceany, but at the same time, it has more flavor. So it's really good. Like, I definitely think it's an acquired taste for most people, but I'm used to eating this stuff, this crazy stuff. So I think it's really good. It does have a little bit more of the sliminess, but that's also because I ate the tail part of it first. The front part of it probably won't have any sliminess. So usually when people eat these snails, what they do is you can eat it raw, actually, or blanched, and then they slice it into uh, thin pieces and then they mix it with a salad, like a seafood and veggie salad. But yeah, that was good. Hmm. Oh, the crab, the main event, and I forgot all about it. Now let's do the main event, the crab. Break off the leg. Okay, this is kind of crazy. Most people use a crab breaker. I think that's what it's called. I don't know where mine is. Oh, right here. This. But, I can use my teeth. I grew up learning how to eat crap this way um, because you don't, not always around a crab breaker. My um, my experience with eating crab was that my family um, and family friends, we go catch it ourselves. We live in the Pacific Northwest after all, right? Crabs are everywhere in the Puget Sound. So when we're out there, most of the time, someone or another has forgotten to bring a crab breaker. So everyone is just like trying to eat. And so that's the only way, just bite it yourself. Um, the reason is we like the crab fresh, especially Asians. We love our crabs fresh. We don't like it pre-frozen and we don't like to cook it and eat it two hours later. So we bring pots and propane and burners and just cook our crab and our seafood right there on the beach. So, mm. so I've learned how to do it with my teeth. You have to be very careful and strategic because you can definitely break a teeth. So don't do this at home. See that? That's right, professional. There's like stress points on a crab and you have to feel it. And once you get the right point and you just chomp down, it comes apart. I call it uh, a crab's Achilles heel. See? 
And you have to be careful because you can also cut your top on the jagged pieces. So that's why I say I do not recommend this for anyone at home. If you do not know what you're doing or have no experience doing this, it's taken me a lifelong experience. But yeah, most people, all you have to do is that. And that's exactly the same thing I'm doing with my teeth. <laughs> But I mean, that's because I have pretty good teeth. I'm not gonna jinx myself, but you see this meat? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Let me get my coriander ready. Dip my crab into my toxic, spicy, green wasabi and lime sauce. And then, mmm. Mm. Nothing better than this. Mm. And then milk tea, top it out. Mm. So, there you have it, guys. My whole meal, all fresh and conveniently from the grocery market here. So I'm, when the season starts again, I am going to actually go crabbing. I'm gonna take you guys crabbing with me, clam digging, and I'm gonna even try my hand at shrimping this year. So I'm gonna show you guys how to catch your own seafood in the Pacific Northwest. All right, so go away so I can finish eating in peace, but don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel, please. Comment down below if you guys wanna see more of this stuff.